Right, this is take three. We'll try again. First video got cut off. Second video, the phone fell. Oh my god. Let's try again. Take three. So, hello everybody. This is my outfit for today. This is Lord Jeremiah coming to you from your computer or phone screen or tablet screen, which probably most people are using these days, apparently. So first I'm going to show you my outfit. Well, let me lock exposure first. Otherwise it'll keep going dark. I forgot my other phone stand, so... Here goes. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make it look like that instead of looking virtually up so you can get all of me, not just this bit and then the rest it's like fecking sky. I'm trying to be sort of in the shot, like proper just in the shot, but can't do it and I forgot my stupid stand, so anyway. So as I was trying to say in my last video, that apparently we all have these vibrations. And the reason I was talking about this was because when I was on my way to the supermarket and I came back, there was this really loud motorcycle screeching past. But it was not only very loud, it also shook the ground. And as a result, it also shook me. And it kind of, a vibration shot through me as it went past. It was really horrible. It wasn't very pleasant at all. It actually hurt my heart. I could feel it in my heart, the vibration, and it actually physically hurt. It was really horrible. It actually made me angry. Because it's like, is that really necessary? Is it really necessary to shock people like that? I mean, it literally gives you like a kind of electric shock, but more like a vibration shock. shock. So that's why it made me think about the whole, apparently we all have a vibration. And apparently the reason why there's more chaos in the world is because we're not all on the same vibration, apparently. So when people talk about vibing and stuff like that, you just think it's a figure of speech, but I never knew it was like literal, like we all literally have a vibration. And some people's are like up here, some people's are here, some people's are down here. And that's why we don't all align and there's like a lot of chaos in the world. So I've been learning all about this stuff and the best way to align meditation, uh, me uh, no, align vibrations is to uh, listen to specific like meditation music so I have been finding by chance actually I didn't search for it by chance I've found a bunch of meditation music on YouTube and I've just been listening to different ones but apparently you're supposed to listen to the same ones every day but I don't know which ones to listen to because some of them are like 300 hertz some are 400 hertz some are 500 plus hertz some were like 800, some were like 1,000. It's like, which one do I listen to? Because everybody's got to be the same vibration. So how do I know what vibration everybody else is on so I can make sure I'm on that vibration? Or higher, because you're supposed to be on like a high vibration because that's when you attract the most like abundance of things. But So apparently you're supposed to listen to the same one every day, at least for 10 minutes every day. Maybe 10 minutes in the morning and 10 minutes at night sort of thing. When I say morning, I just mean whenever you get up, whenever you go to bed. I personally get up in the afternoon and go to bed in the morning. So, you know, I would listen to some when I got up in the afternoon and some when I go to bed in the early hours of the morning. So, yeah, so when, just whenever you wake up and go to bed, so to speak. So, yeah. Um, but I don't know what to listen to because they, they all, you know, which ones to stick with. Because they're all different. Like, one of them is for attracting money. And a different one is for, um, like, healing. Another one is for bringing positivity. Another one is for attracting, like, a relationship, attracting love and friends. And then you've got others that say specifically attracting your twin flame. Another one about remembering who you were in a past life. Another one for remembering who you really are, like, what your true purpose is in this life. You know, there's all different ones. It'd be kind of nice if there was... If you're supposed to just listen to the same one every single day, it'd be kind of cool if there was one that did everything. You know, you just attracted everything. So the ones I tend to listen to are ones that do say just attract abundance, which means everything. You know, money, 
power, success, um, relationships, people, you know, basically people treating you nicer and wanting to be in your life, I guess. Which so far nobody does, so it's not really worked. But that's because I've not been doing it right. So I've not been doing it every day and the same music. I did start to, but I've kind of stopped now. I found another one that I listened to last night as I was going to sleep. But I can never fall asleep when that's going on, so I have to vent at some point. I'll listen to it for 10 minutes, and even if I'm like drifting off, I will just stop it and put my phone away. Because I can't, I can't fall asleep fully with, with some kind of noise going on. It has to be total silence for me. I can't listen to meditation music or people talking in those soothing voices. You know, sometimes you get the guided meditations where they have those soothing voices. You know, like, um, feel yourself drifting off into a deep, cleansing, relaxing sleep. I can't sleep with that going on. It's like, I'm, fu I'm fully awake the whole time, but sort of drifting, but still fully awake. So I'm like, oh, I can't, I've got to turn it off. <laughs> yeah, I can't do that. <laughs> it doesn't work for me. The music the same, it doesn't matter how soothing it is. I have to shut it off. I think the only thing I could probably fall asleep to is maybe rain sounds or something, but not all the sounds of the rainforest or anything like that, where it's like you get bloody birds screeching or whatever and what have you so it has to be just rain like I say any other noises it's gonna go so yeah may as well just put dogs barking in it have that in it just have a thing with rain but then have a fucking dog barking the whole time may that that's like how bad it is how pointless it is when you hear all the sounds of the rainforest but it's not just rainforest and like soothing like whistly birds you also hear the screechy birds going ah you know how how is that gonna relax you so yeah it's really kind of shit so yeah i'd recommend doing that so so for anyone who's having a particularly hard time like i don't have the worst life ever it's just that there's certain things that i want that don't happen for me my life isn't really that bad okay it's pretty good not like super stressful but for anybody who's going through real hard times or trauma, I think that they should. They've gone through trauma, maybe. And then now they're feeling the effects of the trauma. I think your best bet is to listen to this meditation music. No, I, I would recommend the ones... Well, any ones. Just try, try different ones. But I recommend the ones with just the music. I just thought, oh, I need guided meditation. Because I don't know how to meditate. But I actually quite like to just listen to the music and just, like, visualise something in my head. And when I say visualise, I don't necessarily mean just the vision, like, the image. I mean, like, talk in my head and say what it is that I want and keep saying it over and over again. Apparently that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to just say a thing over and over again. Saying... And you're supposed to say... This will happen. Don't say, I want, or I hope, or I pray, or I wish. You're supposed to say, it will happen. This certain thing will happen. It's, I think it's called manifesting. That's how you manifest something to happen. You say, it will happen over and over again. You just keep saying that. And you can visualise it if you want. Or say, I am. Either it will happen, or I am this, that, the other, whatever it is that you want to be. Like, I am calm... I am happy, I am powerful, I am worthy, I am worthy of great things happening to me, you know, I am worthy of people being nice to me, you know, whatever it is, it's like for me personally, I wouldn't say I'm treated like really badly, but occasionally I do get treated like shit, I suppose everybody does, but I really take it to heart, I personally take it really to heart when people are really shitty with me. And I don't really count, like, internet trolls or anything like that. I, I count just, like, people, like, for no reason at all. Like, I'm a nice person. I'm always pleasant to people. But if they start on me, like, start acting condescending or treating me like a small child, it really offends me because it's like, you know, why? Because it makes me think the reason why they do it is because, you know, they think that they can because they think that I'm... 
a target. It's like I, I'm a, a decent target for them. Meaning, like, they, they look at me and they see this sort of small, maybe they think I'm timid and meek or something, so they think, oh, I can pick on, let's say, her. I can pick on her because she's so small and she's probably not going to fight back and she's just going to, like, roll over and take it. So I kind of think about people just think, thinking that about me, thinking I'm just, like, the type that's just going to roll over and take it. The truth is I'm not, and a lot of people are usually quite maybe probably shocked i don't know like for sure but they're probably shocked when they think that i'm this kind of person and then they sort of realize that i'm not that type of person and that i am gonna give it large and tell them what for if they give me grief i have done that before people have been shocked depends what kind of grief though if people are sort of low-key attacking me and sometimes I don't always recognise it or register it, so sometimes I don't always react probably the way I ought to. But uh, but if someone's like outright nasty to me, I usually end up giving it like ten times worse than what they gave to me. <laughs> like those women who went past and said that they were gonna... They said, um, it was actually on my birthday. I was just playing about here at the wall, playing about with my new toy that I got for my birthday and I was having like really a lot of fun but unfortunately they kind of spotted me like I wasn't looking over the wall but they kind of spotted like my head or whatever and they said what the fuck is that and then they started going about oh you freak and you weirdo and I, you know cap uh what was it, what did it say something about seeing me at the shops and that they're gonna do something to me basically they were threatening to me threatening me that if they when next they saw me out and about at the shops that they were going to do something to me. They always keep saying put me down or put me on the floor. I don't know what that means specifically, but I just know it's a threat. I know they mean like they're going to wrestle me to the ground or something. It's probably the worst place to come. That's where the fucking dog is. So yeah, so yeah, bells that. It's just it was getting quite dark over there. The light's a little bit better over here. Plus change of scenery as well. I figured was kind of what we needed. Show you my outfit in this area. I'll try and be quiet so I don't set that stupid dog off. It's always fucking, it's always barking. They never do anything about it. I figure it's because they actually want the neighborhood to know that they've got a dog and a big dog at that. So that no one will think to burgle them. Never, they, they, they personally have never had a dog. This is their first dog ever. And their kids are like teenagers now. Never had a dog before, but for some reason... They never take it out, by the way. Just want to point this out, they never take it out. I've never seen it out once. The only time I saw it, and how I know they haven't had a dog in the first place, apart from the barking, is that I saw it when they first brought it home. But that was about it. I've not seen it out and about since. Well, that's not true. I saw them take it out once. Years ago. That was it. <laughs> years ago. Years ago. Oh, no, it wasn't them. There was actually two doors up from them had a, a German Shepherd. I saw that out once. Again, that's another dog that never went out, really. They had a Rottweiler, and then the Rottweiler died, and then they got a German Shepherd next. And I saw that being taken out once. I never saw the Rottweiler ever being taken out. And just the same, I never see that being taken out. Ooh, nice sunset. It's a shame I can't see it because of all the damn trees and buildings in the way, but I can see it through those windows, the reflection in the windows over there. I can see the beautiful red and purple and pink sky with the blue. Anyway, so what was I saying? Oh yeah, the women. Yeah, they said they were going to put me on the floor or whatever. And unfortunately, when I heard this, something triggers me and makes me want to retaliate. So I just start shouting stuff at them. I didn't really threaten them, but... I guess I, w I was threatening, but I didn't actually threaten them. Like, more intimidating. Really, I should probably just ignore them. Anyway. And just recently, um... I was talking to a person who I was supposed to be meeting up with, and he went, "Let's the, there's no rush or whatever, or there's no hurry, lady," he said, like in that condescending way. 
Like, I know it, he's calling me lady, but it's kind of like, you know, the way he said it is in a condescending way. So whenever I, whenever people treat me this way, the reason I take it so, I take it hard is because I think there's something about me that makes them feel like that they can treat me like this. Like, I, I, I understand, I keep telling myself, they'd probably just treat anyone like this. Like, I figured, if he treated me that way, then he probably treats other people that way that he's meeting up with. I don't know. But if he does treat everyone else really nicely, but he treats me like that, then it's kind of, like, a bit insulting to me, because it, he feels like he can talk to me like that, but not other people. Like, you wouldn't, would you? So the meet was, like, I told him a time, which he asked, he asked what time, so I told him a time, three o'clock, but it would take him four hours to get here, because he was coming by bicycle. So this was at about 12 p.m., and I said, well, in order for you to get here by three, surely you should have set off by now. So I just said, oh, are you on your way, then? And he was like, nope. I said, well don't you think you should because you know it's gonna be four o'clock at this rate and well it would be if you actually set off there and then when I was talking but he said nope no I can't do it yet I'm like okay so you're gonna be late then which is fine with me but I just need to know the deal like he's not exactly explaining anything to me he's just kind of saying nope I'm, I'll be you know just whenever I feel like it kind of attitude so that's when he said what's the rush lady and I said, the rush is, I told you a time to be at, which you asked for. You didn't just say, oh, it could be any time. You actually asked me for a specific time. So I just gave one. I mean, I full, I knew you know, full well it's going to be later than that because I only just get up at like 3 p.m. So it would be nearer 4 o'clock anyway when I probably met him. But I said, well, I'm just giving you a ballpark. So it's just 3 o'clock, but it might be a bit later. But I'll let you know like if I'm going to be a bit late sort of thing. I try not to be too much later than I say. I, when I give a time, I just say like roughly that time because I've done it before when I've not given a time and they've thought it's after 5 p.m. or they've thought that it's like in the morning or something. It's like, no way. <laughs> that's too early. That's too late. So that's why I say it's just in the afternoon pretty much, but late afternoon because when you say afternoon, people just think like 12 p.m. or something. Like, if I say going out for lunch, they think, like, 12 p.m. But really, lunch for me is, like, probably late afternoon. So, but I just I just give a time for a rough thing. But the fact that I've actually said a time, and then he's just been so blasé about this time and just say, well, I'll set off when I'm ready sort of thing. And it could be, like, 5 o'clock at night when I do finally get there. It's like, that's not acceptable. And he said, what's the rush lady? It just seems like he's not really taking me seriously. He's not taking the meat seriously. It's like you wouldn't act like that if you were going to a job interview or, or something or any kind of appointment. You know, you wouldn't want to be late because the people that you have the appointment with would not approve of you being late. Like the doctors go ballistic if you're even a few minutes late. And yet, well, if you go there on time to a lot of these appointments, they will make you wait for five, ten plus minutes. It's like, but you're not allowed to be late. You know, it's like, it is a bit shit and wrong and stupid, but yeah. So I want, I want these people who I meet with to treat me, to treat a meet with me like it's a, a job interview or an appointment and take it seriously and treat me with respect and the meet up with me with respect. I don't, I don't mind them being late. I'm not going to be as bad as these appointment people, obviously, but it's just the attitude, you know? The, it was, it just seems so arrogant, like, oh, it doesn't matter. Well, we, we said this time, but it doesn't matter if I'm late because, you know, who cares about you? You know, you don't have things to do. You don't have, like, a life to lead or whatever. You know, you can, ju you can just wait for me. Just the sheer attitude of it, really. Unspotted. Not friendly, then. I've come over here for the light. I don't really like doing it here, because if anybody sort of comes past and they see this, and the lens is up, this here is not actually a part of the phone. It kind of come, pops up like a separate thing. 
So if people see that, it looks like I'm recording outwards, but actually I'm recording. It only pops up when it's recording me. So obviously the camera lens on the outside is actually on the unit itself. Whereas to look at me, a separate lens has to pop up for some reason with this phone, because it's all screen. So it doesn't have... That's why I prefer things like an iPhone, because it has, you know, a camera lens. So it does, one doesn't pop up, because it just looks obvious I'm recording, and they don't know that it's recording me. They think it's recording outwards. And then they think you're a weirdo for recording, even though it's perfectly legal and everybody does it. Well, lo loads of people do it anyway. Anyway, so... So what do, what do you guys think of that guy then? I mean, I could get the, te I should get the text messages for you so I can tell you specifically what he said, but I won't, you get the gist. He was supposed to meet me at three. He knew that it would take him four hours to get to me. So he should have set off at a certain time to make sure that it allowed for the four hours and he would get here for three. I wouldn't mind if it was a bit late and it was like 3.30 or 4 o'clock. I wouldn't mind that, but it was just the sheer attitude that he wasn't taking me seriously. That's the thing that bothered me. Just really arrogant attitude and like, I can't be asked, like very blasé attitude. That's what bothered me, not the fact that he was going to be late. I didn't mind if he was a bit late, like he set off at 12 and ended up getting here for, for 4 or whatever. I wouldn't have minded that. But just, again, the attitude that he gave me, just what he said, and the implications by what he said, that is the thing that bothered me. So it's things like that is as an example of things that do really offend me, and I, I can take to heart. I'm trying not to, because I know it's not good, and you're supposed to just move on and let it go over your head. It's not supposed to bother you. But I'm just using it as an example here rather than ranting about it. Maybe everybody does, maybe everybody's like me, but I'm just, the reason I'm, I'm talking about this stuff is to kind of give a lot of you an insight into how I think, to maybe see if you think, you you guys think the same way as me, or whether you, you think differently. Like most people, when they get awkward people like that, probably just brush it off and it's just like, it doesn't bother me, it doesn't touch me. And then other people take it to heart. people who just take stuff to heart more than others I guess but I'm, I'm trying to change my mindset so that I don't think like that so I don't think oh it's me you know people treat me like crap because I'm not worthy or I'm they think that I'm a piece of shit or whatever is that my neighbor yeah it's my neighbor he's a nice neighbor I've been angling to say hello the reason being is because the last time I was I was in his eye line and he waved to me and I kind of ignored him. But not because I was being rude, it's because I didn't really know he was waving at me. I thought maybe he was waving at somebody else behind me. But by the time I'd looked around to make sure there wasn't anybody else before I waved back. Because I've done that before where someone has greeted what I think is me and then it turns out there was someone behind me or next to me or something in my vicinity. And I've waved and I'm like, oh shit, you know, it wasn't to me, it's kind of embarrassing. So I just looked around to see if there was anyone else around. But by the time I looked back to wave back at him, he, he kind of wasn't looking anymore. So I feel really bad about that. So I have been sort of, I was hoping to talk to him at some point. And like explain, hey, I'm sorry I didn't wave to you that day, but I wasn't being rude. <laughs> I didn't realize you were waving at me, <laughs> you know, that sort of thing. So anyway, it would be nice to see how other people think, like, you know, 